Neurotic problems that are usually reported in the clinics okay. and uh, primarily as you saw uh, in our uh, last lecture that there was a stark difference between the neurotic and the psychotic patterns of behavior. Okay. Uh, today we would come across interesting pattern of uh, human aberrated behavior okay, what is uh, popular, popularly called as uh, neurotic disorders. The first one anxiety. Okay. Uh, which is primarily a state of uh, free floating anxiety which is usually punctuated by acute attacks. Okay. Uh, when you look at the DSM criteria okay, where you have the whole description of uh, uh, anxiety disorders you will find even no different type of anxiety being uh, talked about. But remember one thing this is uh, one of the most common type of uh, what you call uh, issue that majority of the people would tell you that they had suffered it at certain time in their life. Okay. Uh, for example, if uh, somebody has to uh, know board a train okay, and you realize that uh, the train which comes uh, to a particular station where you are waiting to board it, okay, it is fully crowded. No? This could uh, instigate a sense of uh, anxiety within you. Okay. Because you know uh, that you would have to struggle a lot in terms of finding out uh, a seat for yourself. Uh, say similarly, uh, if you are uh, you know, uh, planning to <coughs> take a flight and you are told that the flight has been rescheduled. Okay. So, whole lot of uh, situations will come throughout life most of the days where you would realize that things would not move the way you had actually thought of it. You are told that uh, no, there will be a quiz, you are anxious now, okay. uh, what is actually going to happen to you. Okay. You are told that there will not be any quiz and you are still worried I do not know what is going to happen to our scoring system. So, all these types of uh, no, uh, situations where you think that uh, no, things are not the way you expect them to be. Uh, the outcome somehow troubles you uh, within. Okay. Such situations can lead to certain degree of anxiety, but the type of anxiety that we are talking about here is the free floating anxiety. Free floating anxiety would be uh, that irrespective of what type of situation you are encountering, you just feel anxious. Okay. Unlike the examples that we took. Okay, if you have to board a train and the train is all jam packed, okay, it is really a cause of concern because uh, you know, with the uh, two bags that you are carrying it you will find difficult to you know, find a place for yourself. Okay. Uh, finding out a seat for yourself would be difficult, even uh, somebody who would be you know, occupying your seat you will have to struggle uh, to make the seat available for yourself. Okay. So, there is a genuine uh, no problem that you anticipate and uh, all these things make you anxious which is genuine here. But in the case of free float anxiety you just feel anxious irrespective of the varying situations. You have to come to the class at 8 this is a source of anxiety for you okay. 8 30 onwards there is a source of anxiety that uh, fine I have to go to some other room now. Okay. I had to, I did not take my breakfast, I have to you know, do this, I have to do that, several, several things. So, it is more like say uh, searching for reasons that can really make you anxious. The problem comes when you have situations uh, which are actually uh, you know, punctuated by acute type of anxiety okay. and acute anxiety will have its own uh, you know, uh, manifestation. Okay when for a certain small period of time you find yourself uh, no completely at the mercy of the symptoms that you are experiencing. Okay. Then uh, another set of uh, common neurotic problem is the phobic reaction. Okay. 
Now fear we have talked about, uh, know when we were going through uh, goal congruent, incongruent uh, emotions and the appraisal process, how it influences uh, adjustment at that time. We had talked about uh, the basic emotions and fear happens to be one of the basic emotion. Okay. But fear and phobia are uh, no two different from each other. Okay. A phobic situation would ensure that the fear that you are experiencing, the fear symptom is actually irrational. Whereas, in the case of fear, you have a justification. Okay. Why is it that when uh, there is a announced quiz, okay, everybody turns up? There is a rational fear and the rational fear is that if I miss it, okay, I will be missing on certain percentage in terms of the grade that I will uh, finally get. Okay. So, it is the sense of uh, no loss of grade which is actually a real threat which makes you uh, no scared and therefore, you ensure that you are uh, present there. But phobia would be a scary reaction, a reaction which is full of fear, but then the fear that you are uh, holding is actually completely, completely, completely baseless. Okay. Uh, uh, for example, uh, say whenever you go out, okay, cross the road and you see this huge ground in front of you, you feel scared. Why? Because uh, the ground where you are, you realize that it is vast, no? it is quite open from all the side. So, I do not know what might come from what side. Okay. This could be one set of fear. The other set of fear could be that the moment you, you know, close the two doors, you have a cluster, claustrophobic tendency, you know? everything from all the sides is wall. So, if something happens, how will I run away? They are just diametrically opposite type of fear, but it happens. Okay. If you see the whole list of uh, phobic reactions, you would realize that we have more than 120 types of phobias. Somebody is uh, phobic towards something else, somebody else is uh, phobic towards something else. Okay. Uh, the most common ones you would find is claustrophobia, uh, where uh, you are extremely uh, scared of closed spaces. Okay. Uh, and it is very common, you will find in people who are otherwise pretty normal, except this type of, of phobic reactions that they show hematophobia very common. Okay. Uh, you see uh, an accident that has taken place, you see the blood coming out of uh, the wound okay, and you faint. I am sure you must have seen many people like this. No? They faint when they see blood, this is hematophobia, no? you are ex phobic to blood. I know two people who are here, uh, no, very somehow uh, closely related to me, who would never take the lift. Okay. And remember, no, I sit on the sixth floor and from there, even if they have to come to some office twice or thrice a, uh, a day, okay, they will now take the staircase. And once I asked him, okay, uh, why do you take a staircase when you, you know that he had come you know, right from the account section to the top. And again he told me, sir, I will take this file and go downstairs. So, I told him take a lift, why do you know climb uh, staircase so much and of course, he is slim trim, no? so he does not need to worry that much about the weight okay. and he gave me justification, <coughs> justification was that it is for physical fitness, but I know that that man for last 20 years has never used the lift, reason phobia okay. and it is irrational, you see people getting in, you see people getting out. But the moment the you know, door of the lift closes, you are scared, no, it is all closed. I do not know what is going to happen to me. These are irrational fears. Okay. Uh, zoophobic people, no, people who are very, very uh, scared of animals, no, people who are uh, you know, extremely scared of um, uh, contamination. No. I, every time they feel as if they have touched it, no, some contamination has taken place a whole long list of uh, phobic reactions you would realize. Uh, 
uh, it reminds me of a very interesting case long long back uh, I knew somebody who happened to be a doctor who had completed his MBBS was doing his MD he was married had a small baby and uh, most of the places you would find that there are uh, you know uh, hostels for married uh, students no so this man had uh, a room in the married doctors hostel so once when i visited uh, him he had a very cute very young little daughter so i asked uh, you know uh, do you know what your father does and she said yes and when i asked what and she told me you uh, know he repeatedly takes bath okay so i was actually inquiring about the profession of the father okay and the girl told me that father you uh, know is just into bathing nothing else and then the mother gave the justification uh, when the child wakes up in the morning okay that's the time when the father has to go to the hospital okay for getting ready the father has to go to the bathroom and he uh, you know takes bath the first impression that the child has papa is taking bath once he comes back from the hospital okay okay he would remove all his clothes once again take bath because there is a possible perception of contamination he'll take bath okay daughter sees that also that's the time when the daughter will once again eat something and sleep when she wakes up at around 4 or 5 the father has to go for a visit to the ward before going to the ward again he takes bath okay and when he comes back at around 7:30 or 8 again he takes bath okay and that's the time when the child once again has dinner and she sleeps so during her wake up duration all she sees is that father goes comes back before and after and there is a process of bathing all the time no i'm not saying that this is good or bad i'm not saying that this was phobic uh, reaction in a potential doctor all i'm saying is that uh, you will find lot many people who are into such type of uh, behavior who have uh, you know uh, fear of things which usually you do not find a large number of people being scared of okay and primarily what happens in phobic reaction is that because you have an irrational fear therefore you would try your best to avoid that situation okay the situation that makes you scared you tend not to fall in that situation okay so if you are claustrophobic you will ensure that you never get into a closed space this is something that you always ensure then we come to another interesting type of uh, uh, neurotic reaction that is obsessive compulsive disorder okay you will find it written ocd sometimes sometimes written ocn basically means one and the same no obsessive compulsive disorder will be ocd and if it is obsession compulsion neurosis obsessive compulsive neurosis then it is ocn okay now this has a very interesting dynamics it has two elements no one is the element of obsession and the second one is the element of compulsion obsession has to do with the thought process compulsion has to do with the action okay so if a thought perseverates in your mind for long duration then it is a obsessive thought okay and if an action gets repeated multiple times then it is a compulsive act am i clear so there has to be a cycle of thought or action if it is a cycle of thought then it is obsession if it is a cycle of uh, action then it is compulsion but what is interesting is that compulsion is always preceded by obsession so the act the cyclic act that you perform is always followed by uh, sorry it always it is always preceded by a thought that keeps on keeps on perseverating in your mind and therefore it is called a neurotic thought uh, but i must tell you that there is a need to draw a very clear line of distinction i'll give you some examples okay don't feel scared you know when i give these examples uh you are coming from the city you went to uh, a mall to get something and you saw a beautiful girl 
or you saw a very handsome boy okay i am assuming that you have a heterosexual preference okay and then while you return back uh, you know that beautiful girl or handsome boy that image repeatedly comes to your mind you found that boy or girl to be really charming match the boy or the girl of your dream and therefore you constantly have that image coming to you all of you have experienced it anybody who says no thankfully nobody okay otherwise i would have to think think of the other type of a problem no so you saw somebody you found a momentary sense of infatuation and that makes that image repeatedly come to you this has happened to everybody now is it an obsessive thought the answer is no okay although there is a repetition in the thought okay it is not followed by a compulsive act and therefore it doesn't qualify to be a neurotic problem it is a legitimate genuine type of uh, what you call human reaction you saw somebody you found her to be charming you found him to be handsome okay and therefore uh, you just uh, know uh, that beautiful appearance or that uh, know handsome appearance flashes back repeatedly to you which is absolutely fine you wake up early in the morning okay uh, you leave your bed and walk in the corridor and suddenly you start you know humming a song and you keep keep on keep on keep on hum, uh, humming that's the same song throughout the day has it happened to you okay is it compulsion the answer is once again no okay just it happened okay there is uh, no obsessive thought that is guiding you okay had it been preceded by an obsessive thought then it would have been uh, no a case of a neurotic problem otherwise you realize that although there is a repetition it doesn't qualify to be a neurotic problem remember uh, that it is very important to draw lines no when something starts becoming neurotic although it is a repetition in both the examples that we took here it there is a situation of repetition okay but then up to certain limit it doesn't uh, become a neurotic act okay beyond certain limit yes but think of other situations uh you feel as if uh, no uh, your hand has not been washed properly and therefore no you take some soap and no rub it and then wash your hand once twice thrice four five ten fifteen multiple times a day okay each episode of cleaning the hand okay is far more uh, you know uh, higher in frequency compared to what other people would do in the same situation okay now this is a repetitive act but such repetitive act qualifies for obsessive compulsive neurosis for the reason that this act is preceded by an obsessive thought of the fact that you still need to be clean why you still need to be clean is again a big question no what is it that makes you feel that you are unclean okay many 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 things we won't go into the details of it and therefore you would realize that uh, usually uh, people who are uh, no prone to such type of a thing or who have been uh, reflecting uh, ocn for example washing hand okay you would realize they wash their hand to the extent that they have wounds on their skin okay so because of excessive cleanliness okay the part of the skin starts peeling off no so you have all uneven surface here on the palm okay you might have cracks in the pores of the finger okay simply because you have applied too much of soap and too much of water simply and you have kept on kept on kept on rubbing it it goes to that extent okay you are told that there is a great dearth of water don't waste it 
for rest of the things you ensure that water is not wasted, but as far as cleaning is concerned you do not compromise on that. Okay. These are interesting examples of obsessive compulsive disorders. Hysteric reactions also you find it uh, uh, being reported to the clinic and uh, usually you would have uh, hysteric reactions of two type no? the somatoform hysteric reactions where uh, the symptoms would be more and more uh, represented in the bodily uh, symptoms and dissociative type of uh, hysteric reactions where you delink yourself. Okay. Uh, situations where in a given type of a situation you suddenly faint. Okay. Now fainting is usually seen in uh, epileptic uh, episodes somebody who really suffers from epilepsy okay, and therefore has such type of epileptic attack. Okay. Or one of the prominent symptom of epileptic attack is that you shake and then you faint for some time. Okay. Again you regain your consciousness, but interestingly there is a very clear distinction between epileptic seizures and hysteric uh, uh, no, con uh, convulsive type of a thing. In uh, epileptic convulsions okay, you have certain uh, no changes taking place in the brain that makes you undergo the convulsive attack. So, you suddenly have this tremor and then you fall down, okay. you keep shaking your body I do not know if you have seen epileptic cases okay. and then after some time you, know, you regain your consciousness this is what happens in epileptic seizures. But in uh, hysteric attacks you would realize that one, will, one would show this such type of convulsive attacks in the front of near and dear ones. Epileptic seizure is irrespective of who is around you, it could take place anywhere, anywhere. Okay. The worst of epileptic seizure at a public place that I have seen was somebody getting out of the train okay, and dot on the gate of the train suddenly that person no starts shaking falls down okay. and he was fortunate not to fall outside no, fortunately he was still inside okay. uh, otherwise he would have no just now fallen on the track, the gap between the platform and the train allows you to fall no, there is little bit of cleft there, fortunately he did not fall there, so that was the worst. But all I am trying to say is that epileptic seizures are basically you know uh, neurologically driven and therefore, you do not uh, know take into account who is near you, okay, who is looking at you. Convulsive hysteric attacks will always first filter. No? are there people you know whom I want to show that see I also have this type of an attack and therefore, you should take care of me, you should be concerned about me. So, there is some secondary benefit that you are uh, somewhere contemplating and therefore, you show those type of convulsive attacks no? that is the form of the hysteric attacks that you see there. So, that is the part of somatoform hysteria. Dissociative hysteria is you know another interesting part of it where you deliberately delete certain part of your memory okay, and you turn amnesic. Um, I do not know, I do not know where I was last evening. Okay. You select a part of it and you remove it. Okay. Uh, there is an associated concept in psychology called motivated forgetting. <coughs> Motivated forgetting is a similar type of a situation where you are desperate enough to delete something from your content, conscious content of your memory. Okay. And the worst of uh, hysteric attack uh, in the dissociative form could be where you go for multiple personality, okay. where I am say Ram Prasad right now. Okay. And then after certain period of uh, time in my life, I suddenly become Lakshmi Narayan. When I become Lakshmi Narayan, Lakshmi Narayan does not remember Ram Prasad. After two years of being Lakshmi Narayan, I again become Ram Prasad and then 
the second uh, phase of Ram Prasad does not remember that for two years I was Lakshmi Narayan. Okay. Such type of you no know, uh, situations, although I have you not know, temporarily make, made it much more longer, it could be temporarily much more shorter also. Okay. That is what is called as uh, you know, that is the whole dynamics of amnesia, fugue, multiple personality, that those are the symptoms of dissociative hysteria. Uh, a classic example, uh, I read it in a clinical episode where during second world war, uh, uh, I think it is a British naval uh, ship, I think so, I am I, not getting it correctly, it might be confusing the two countries. Basically, it was uh, a US vessel and a British vessel okay. and one of uh, the ship uh, got attacked. If I remember correctly, it was the British uh, ship which got attacked, it was about to sink and then uh, the US uh, ship came there and they rescued all the personnels there and there was a man who claimed that he was a doctor okay. and during war time you do not have time to you know cross check the details. Okay. So, he told that he was a doctor and therefore, he was given the responsibility of medical care on the ship. Okay. Later on, after the war was over, when the exchange had to take place, that is the time when uh, the armed forces does it very, very meticulously. You know. So, you tell your name, your details, your uh, identity number, they will match it with their records and then only you know they will uh, transfer you from one country to the other. So, when he gave his details, his name was no such doctor was found by these details in the uh, central register of the armed forces there and therefore, they becomes, became suspicious. Okay. The case was investigated and then it was realized that this man was actually a deck cleaner. Okay. Now, if you rethink it, Okay, why did a deck cleaner decide to say that I am a doctor? Imagine this situation, you are cleaning the deck okay, and you imagine that there would be a shot from the enemy. So, you think that you are the one who is more and more susceptible to such attacks, no? because you are on the deck, no? rest everybody is inside a metallic shield. Okay. Who is the safest guy? I would say only two, you no. Know. One is the cook and the other one is the doctor, <laughs> because they are into their uh, chambers, which is you no know, many many metal sheets, and they are inside that. And perhaps that could be the reason why this man decided. So from the most vulnerable position on the ship, I go to the most safest position. I experience an attack, and then I decide no more deck cleaner. I am a doctor. Most safest place in the ship. And of course, uh, then they digged out the uh, reality, this man was sent for uh, psychiatric treatment and then rest everything happened. So, this is how uh, you know the hysteric reactions you find. These are uh, you know pretty common type of uh, neurotic reactions. Uh, come to the last one that is the depressive neurosis, which basically you know uh, is a state of abnormally prolonged you know, uh, dejection, which is associated with some of the life circumstances, which you consider to be extremely <coughs> stressful. Okay. So, anxiety, phobia, obsession compulsion, hysteria and uh, depression. Okay. These are uh, you know, the five types of uh, neurotic disorders, which you find very commonly being reported to psychiatrist to clinical psychologists. Okay. Remember that for all of these uh, neurotic problem, you need not depend on any drug. Okay. Medication is not needed, you just uh, know go for uh, behavioral interventions and uh, with little help you can very easily come out. Okay. You can lead a normal life the way you used to lead earlier. <coughs> You remember yesterday we were talking about this fact that uh, in the case of uh, neurosis, 
one interesting feature is that most of the people who experience one or the other type of neurotic symptoms, they know that they have something peculiar in them, they have something peculiar in their behavior, but all they realize is that they are uh, know somehow unable to hold it, modify it, contain it. Okay. And therefore, the uh, beauty of uh, know being aware of such type of problem is that in case you realize that you have something which might be one of these problems, it is good, it is good to go and consult a professional. No? These are not uh, know problems of grave order, okay. these are very simple type of problems, you can very easily go consult an expert and uh, with minimum effort get rid of, uh, get rid of it. If you find somebody near and dear to you who also experiences similar type of things, you can uh, know very easily ask him or her to go and uh, meet a, a professional. Little professional help, and you can very easily get out of it. Okay, so there is no problem. No uh, saying that yes, I have this type of thing, or I think that perhaps I have something like this, and therefore I need uh, professional help. Okay, uh, remember that uh, these are you no. Know, in terms of magnitude all these problems are much 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 less problematic okay but somehow the stigma is very strong okay how can i take an appointment with the psychiatrist how can i visit a clinical psychologist okay the great degree of stigma doesn't allow you to do that so all i'm trying to say is that uh, there is no there shouldn't be any hesitation there is no problem going and saying that fine I think perhaps I have this, so tell me whether it is a problem or it is just a normal pattern of behavior. If it is a problem tell me how can I get rid of it. Now we come to two interesting type of uh, neurotic problems, usually you do not find people with these two type of problems. One what is called as hypochondriasis, hypochondriasis is basically a state where one is preoccupied with bodily processes. No? So, I show my tendency to repeatedly touch my wrist and sense if my heartbeat is proper or not, if the pulse rate is proper or not, is the respiration continuous, normal you are too occupied with your body process, no? something that you know all those autonomic functions we hardly care about it. No? It goes to the extent uh, that if you are attached sensors for your uh, respiratory activities and if you match it with that actual template of uh, breathing, you would realize that many of us do not breathe the way you sh we should. Okay. Our total inhale is less than what it should be. Okay. So, you inhale the air and you stop it intermittently and exhale it again. Okay. On biofeedback you can very easily see it know that you inhale less than what you should have actually done. Okay. But in the case of hypochondriasis you are always concerned know what is taking place. So, even if you sleep like this you become suspicious, why is it that I am not able to hear the blood flow in the vessels, perhaps I am turning anemic. But what is more fascinating about hypochondriasis is that you show extreme and extreme involvement with the bodily process and ultimately you churn out, <coughs> I am suffering from some disease. Okay. Usually we do not consider that, normally we do not say that. No? Normally what happens even if you have say uh, for example, uh, uh, pain in your wrist, you will say that I do not know what happened here, study I think while I slept perhaps it might have turned uh, know, abnormally and I have a pain in the wrist. Usually we are driven by this type of a thing, no? that unless the pain persists for more than two days, we do not visit a doctor, it is not that pain occurs and the moment you have the first signal of the pain immediately you rush to the health center doctor 3.5 seconds earlier i had a pain here we are not like that no 
usually we will live with the pain for some time to realize it really it is stable or not. In case we find that it is stable then only we approach a doctor. <coughs> in fact, in our country we are given a blame that we usually visit the clinic too late and when by the time the doctor diagnoses the problem already becomes little more graver. Okay. So, you say that uh, I think uh, you know I have some pain in the stomach most of the days I have it okay. and the doctor asks you. So, since when do you think that you had pain um, I think 2, 3 months, 6 months okay. and then the doctor diagnoses finally that you have stone in your gallbladder, but you live with your pain for quite long. Okay. Uh, one of my family member uh, had uh, uh, no hernia you know what hernia is okay so a part of uh, the mus muscles after age certain age no it starts becoming weaker okay and weakening of the muscle would mean that you uh, know this abdominal area will start shrinking low okay so once it starts shrinking low okay if there is uh, no an extra amount that goes you know closure to this very pelvic area that is what is uh, hernia and uh, doctor surgeons will simply tell you that uh, a surgery needs to be performed and this part of uh, no, uh, the muscle which has slowly gone down it will be removed and that is it. All they do is that the post surgery they will put a wire mesh here no? and that wire mesh will actually be a hard surface which will not allow. Uh, the uh, abdominal area to further shrink down okay because after aging this is a normal thing to happen now when uh, i myself had taken that family member to the doctor and the doctor asks you oh it's a full blown uh, case of hernia so it must be hurting you and he said yes since when last one one and a half year and the doctor was surprised even i too was surprised because that very family member never ever told no, that he has been uh, living with pain. Usually all I am trying to say is that uh, we usually are accustomed of living with a symptom for little longer till we finally go and meet a consultant. Here is the case in hypochondriasis when you do not have a problem you deliberately make search for it. You know uh, when I blink I think you now there is something here okay. in my eye and this could be and when you think this could be you think of the highest magnitude of the problem that you can imagine of. So, this is hypochondriasis now fantastic type of a problem when you deliberately search oh I need a problem, I need a problem, I need a problem heart uh, this skin blood x y z and more and more uh, graver problem you find and more and more novel problem you find you feel yes now I have found something and then you say. I do not know I have been talking to multiple doctors, but they have they are not able to diagnose my problem. You never consider that you do not have a problem, you think that you definitely have a problem, you have been able to convey it to the doctor, poor doctors they are not trained properly, they cannot diagnose me. I have consulted four doctors, this is hypochondriasis. And then comes uh, you know, neurasthenia, which is a very typical type of a problem when you experience chronic fatigue weakness and complete lack of enthusiasm. Okay. Uh, there was a popular uh, uh, drink by one of the very popular brands in our country okay, uh, which used to advertise ye bichara kaam ke boch ka mara. Okay. I do not know if you have seen this ad, okay, it is a beautiful ad uh, Javed Jafri would come like this to the office okay, as if he would collapse any moment. Okay. And then this background sound comes, ye bichara kaam ke boch ka mara isko chahiye. And then the name of the um, company, ka, and then name of the product. He has one teaspoon of that product, and suddenly, you know, enters to instead of entering to the gate, uh, okay, hits the window, the window, you uh, know, the glass breaks off, and then he makes an entry. Rest everybody is working, they are normal, and he is hyperactive that is neurasthenia the previous state not the later state. Okay. When uh, you wake up in the morning to report that I do not know that mood near weakness 
fatigue okay and this is something that you live with throughout the day and that happens repeatedly primarily uh, all type of uh, life engagements worldly uh, interaction will demand that you should show certain degree of enthusiasm even cleaning of the teeth for example no you cannot say, cannot have something like this no? there is a need for certain degree of energy in the act no so you take the pace you know do something there is an action and this action ensures that you have some uh, no uh, no much more of power and passion enthusiasm involved in that irrespective of what the act is it could be a small act which you perform ritualistically daily or it could be a novel act that you are performing today some degree of enthusiasm is there but neurasthenia will uh, finally make you completely you know behave as if you are completely completely drained of your energy nothing is left within you okay so therefore i compared it with that very product no so uh, that was all about uh, the neurotic uh, problems.